Mark, thank you for the invitation today to Mellish Engineering. When, when we first contacted you, I wasn't quite sure what to expect here, yeah. but I've been really surprised and uh, intrigued by the level of investment that's gone on here. Tell us about the last sort of six months uh, investment six, here. Well, the last six months we've um, done some work and basically spent £900,000 worth of uh, uh, money. Um, what led to that? Uh, the market, the market demand. Uh, we was looking for to increase our own capacity to be able to give better service to our customers. So. You know, the way to do that is to be able to do, be in more control of it and be able to do more in-house. I'm sure um, people watching are thinking, well, what markets are they? Can you elaborate? Uh, top sea, Chris, I'm afraid, no. Uh, mainly the subsea market. Uh, we've got an API approval, which is the American Petroleum Institute uh, that we put in place uh, 18 months ago. And it's a real niche uh, for our sort of product on safety critical fasteners. So uh, uh, of that investment, how much is in the star machines that we see behind us here? Uh, about 50%. Uh, 50% is the other customers, uh, you know, a lower, a lower sort of price point, but, you know, high volume. So these machines here, this is a brand new one we've got behind us. You yeah. also had three star machines before you had these three. Yeah. You transitioned the business some years ago from going from manual turning into CNC. Yeah. That was a big leap, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, you know, it, we, had to, we had to turn to, te to technology. Um, we was looking at the market and looking at our prices, you know, losing opportunities. So we looked at machine technology rather than, you know, introducing more older, older fashioned machines. So you went from kind of an £8,000 manual machine up to, yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth in CNC. Yeah. Was it the right choice? 100%, 100%, never look back. Um, stars, it's one of those things you get addicted to them and, um, you know, the accuracy, the, the quality that comes off. Um, and purely the speed, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a game changer for us as a company. Uh, talk to me about the materials that you were cutting because that yeah. was one of your concerns that you'd looked at this sort of machine and you thought, is it heavy duty enough yeah. to tackle the types of materials that you machine? Yeah. Can you explain for our audience what you were worried about? Uh, the rigidity of the machine. Um, I mean, we, we, again, and also, also the cost. Um, with the materials that we turn in, which is Inconels and Monels, you know, cutting at very high speeds, you know, you have to be a little bit worried on whether you're going to get the product quality afterwards. So we, we did a transition really on, on we started off with a, buying a second hand machine. Um, we had a guy called Mark Hansen who was from Star who, who kept coming in, you know, convincing us. Star were brilliant, they did some cutting trials for us. And then we took the leap from, you know, second hand machine to new machine number one, number two, number three, and then took it from there. And have they exceeded your expectations on that front? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Star is such a great company. Um, the customer service, right from the sort of sales contact, um, you know, took us to customers who have got Star technology to, you know, help us convince that, you know, it's the right step to make. And with this style of machine, you would have yeah. been expecting um, a, a certain surface finish uh, to maintain certain tolerances. Has, have they done that as well? Yeah, 100%. The repeatability is second to none. Second to none. And, and this particular types of parts that we're machining in here, what sort of volumes are they as well, Mark? Uh, we're doing commonly 500s off, 1000s off. Um, we'll even put, you know, a 10 off, um, you know, because the, the time saving from doing a, you know, a manual five operation compared to an operator setting the machine for two hours and getting the part off in an hour after that, you know, we, we, we're and finding that's an advantage. Have you found that with these machines that you can still machine those smaller, yeah. smaller volumes? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, when you consider the, the work that has to go into Sort of making a making a bolt on you know four or five machines you know it's well worth you know an experienced setter setting it up and just making them ten parts in two or three hours and that was a big part as well because even though you were using manual machines you were doing two or three operations weren't you? you've now brought it all onto one machine yeah. you've got the surface finish and the accuracy but you've increased the productivity significantly as well yeah absolutely yeah um, we run these machines 17 hours a day um, even 24 hours a day, depending on the workload, uh, what the workload's like at the time. And often we see these machines with the three metre bar feed. Yeah. You've gone for four. What's the story there? Yeah, there's the, the idea of going for four, um, when we originally had the first stars, we went for three metres, but a lot of the sort of exotic materials we buy come in three and a half metres to four metres long. So, um, you know, notoriously you get quite a large bar remnants with, with star. So we was, you know, middling bars and we was getting double the amount of remnants. So we went for a four metre, which has solved all the problems. Have you ever thought about what return on investment or how quick you get a return from these machines now? Because I know initially it was yeah. a massive outlay for you. Yeah. Is it quick? Um, I'd say over two years, really. The, you know, the payback on the actual machine. I'm sitting here now with, with you know, four stars actually you know, paid for now. So, you know, and again, you know, we're just into the market. I can, you know, dabble with the machines without finance to go to a lesser hourly rate to try and convert more business. 
Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. I was going to ask you about your operators and how they've got on with it. In fact, I'll call Chris across now. Yeah, uh, Chris, if, if you've just got a minute, it'd be interested to get your your perception on this level of technology that yeah. you've got here. What's the journey been like for you in learning how to use these star machines? Generally, it's been really easy. Um, sort of the training that we got from Star was second to none. We, we had really good help, and even when we've had trouble. Um, with pro programming certain jobs, we found them up and they've been really helpful and supportive over the phone as well. Um, they gave us training with all the machines uh, that we, when we have them. What about the technical features on the machines? The so things like, I don't know, the, the setting of the tools, the guide bush and the non guide bush, the programming element. Uh, are those things that you've found advantageous to you as, a, as an operator? Uh, generally, yeah. I mean, they all have their benefits, obviously, the non guide bush and guide bush. We're putting them together and setting the job. It does make life a lot easier, especially the JBS guidebush as well. Yeah. Do, you, do you use the machine in both different modes, guidebush and on? -guide? Yeah, we've got uh, one machine which is non-guidebush, and the rest are all guidebush, uh, JBS guidebush machines, and they all work really well. Um, we don't have any trouble with them, uh, yeah, majorly anyway. And how do you go about setting it and programming a part and making sure you get? you get it off in the fastest cycle time, you know, kind of balancing the operations, the tools. Is the software doing a lot of that for you or does it come down to your experience? Uh, a bit of, uh, generally a bit of both. Um, because we're making much the same parts, we tend to use a, a base program and then just work off that. Um, and then obviously we know certain jobs will have certain cycle time. And if we're doing the same job again, we'll just copy the program over and using the USB stick and that just makes life a lot easier, so it saves a lot of time programming for using, you know, making the same job again. A message for any new venturer into sliding head learning, should they be nervous? No, definitely not, definitely not at all. Um, like I say, the training we got from Star, we, I had a, a small amount of basic CNC programming knowledge. Even with no basic CNC knowledge, you can pick it up. As long as you've got a basic engineering knowledge, you're, you're, you're fine. Absolutely no problem at all. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay. Uh, Mark, finally, to conclude, the, the 32 mil machines, yeah. uh, these machines of your choice just because of, simply because of the bar diameter? Yeah, um, anything really above 32 goes on the conventional CNCs, uh, which we've invested into this year as well. It is on the want list to have the 38, um, but you know that will come next year, I think. Brilliant. Uh, final few words for you to summary uh, your, your, your journey here and your relationship with Star GB from the UK. Yeah, um, fantastic company. Steve Totti runs a, a really superb company. Um, Alistair and even Kath. I've got to mention Kath. She's super on the spheres. Good stuff. <laughs> thank you very much, Mark. Okay, thank you.